a really concerning issue that's arisen in the last months concerns historical allegations of child abuse in football. Your reaction when you started hearing these stories from players? Well, as anybody would, it's, it's terrible, it's horrible, the idea that that would happen in a sporting context, in a football context, that young people um, who were confronted with those, with, those, with those things happening. And, of course, our first reaction is feeling sorry for those people that have been, were victims or, the, as we would say, survivors of those t horrible things. But as a professional, you then have to say, right, you know, we absolutely must make sure, double check, recheck, that everything we are doing now is, you know, clearly, you know, it's a different era. And we have been shining a 2016 light on 1970s, 80s, 90s practices. I've been around a long time. I was certainly around when we started to improve procedures. We called it child protection back then with the FA and the NSPCC advising us and all working together to make sure we had policies in place both at our academies and within communities, community areas and of course that's the most important thing. Are we safeguarding our young people today? And I absolutely am confident, not complacent, that we have the right schemes and the right policies in place and we take this extremely seriously. The clubs take it enormously, you know, in, in, with enormous seriousness. But there is no room for complacency because at any point, you know, these uh, these things can the incidents can happen, and therefore that's obviously what we're concentrating our efforts on right now. The FA obviously and the police quite rightly are going back to look at those historic cases and see what should be done. Not an area I'm sure of contention, but you're supportive of the Football Association's review. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And also everybody's doing their own review. We're doing our own review, even even though. Yeah, even within our own offices, all the clubs are actually you know, going back and making sure, double-checking and rechecking to make sure policies and procedures are in place to make sure nothing like this should ever happen. And that's why you know, we, we could you know, de-risk all this. We could de-risk all this by not getting involved in young people, with just not you know, doing anything for, for community, with not coming into these, to these areas with these young people. But that would be, that would be terrible. That would be the last thing we want to happen. What we want to do is be able to do more of this kind of thing and therefore the safeguarding aspects as they they are now are, are vitally important to all that. One Premier League club has found itself involved in the story, Chelsea in the use of a confidentiality clause with one former victim, controversial. Do you think that was an appropriate move for a club to make? I, I'm involved in that from, a, from obviously from, a, from another perspective, from a regulatory perspective. I'm not going to go on national media and comment about that. We are looking though, obviously we, there will be consequences, all clubs that are, that are being referenced in, in, any, in any reports of abuse will have to go back and look at their look at what happened at the time. Quite difficult, but obviously very few records. Obviously not you know the employees mostly you know, a lot of them dead. Certainly no longer employed by the clubs. Again, it's all, all difficult, but it has to be done. We have to go back, and the clubs will all come back and check. And then when all the data from all these inquiries and everything comes forward, we'll have to deal appropriately with it then, but it would be wrong of me to comment on any individual case. You say you've been uh, around a long time. You were mm. Football League Chief Executive back yeah, yeah. in the late 90s when certainly one case went to convictions and there yeah, were yeah. documentaries <laughs> made. Anything ever cross your desk? No, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Dealt with, dealt with by the authorities. And the Charter of Equality only just come in, and therefore, but certainly when we started to get involved, when I started to get involved at the Premier League in 1999-2000, in obviously child protection and safeguarding, was there was new law, new changes, and we, we worked very hard to make sure that all the safeguarding procedures were put in place then. But initially you weren't aware of anything, any steps nope. at the Football Association level? No, nope, nothing. Is that a sign of the times, perhaps? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think these things were. You know, they just weren't. They just weren't out there in the way. As I say, we are shining a 2016 light, and quite rightly, we are, sh we are shining a 2016 light on what happened a long time ago. But that doesn't mean to say we shouldn't shine on it, because that's the way you learn. You learn from history to make sure you're you're well equipped to deal with now and the future.